been to McDonald's. You go to McDonald's, you know, in Portland. You go to McDonald's in, you know, in in Bangladesh. And the hamburger is going to taste the same. Why is that? Because the process to make the hamburger is always the same, right? So what we want to do is talk about these complex processes. Auctions are complex processes, but they should not they should not yield random results. If you're getting random results, it means you're using a random process. We want to start thinking about a deliberate process. Am I standing right in front of me here? Can you see this? Okay. Would it be better if I stood over on the other side? Why don't I do this? I'm going to quick rearrange the furniture here a little bit. No. <laughs> How's that? Bigger yeah. table. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. But, not but now, computer. what's that? But not for your. No, no, I'm fine. It'll be at the beginning of the Okay. So, like any business, more organized you are, the better the results. And of course, if we don't enjoy shopping. How many of you enjoy shopping in disorganized? No, I, no, I didn't pause after shopping. <laughs> <laughs> it was a middle of a sentence. How many of you enjoy shopping in disorganized stores? That was the question. I don't enjoy shopping. Okay. No, no, we don't. And, and if we do shop in a disorganized store, what do we expect? A bargain, a deal, a steal, right? So think about your auction. Think about the last auction you went to. When you walked in the door, did it did it reach out to you and say, wow, this is great. I wonder what the blue light special is? Or did it reach out to you and say, well, this is like Nordstrom. This is, you know, this is like shopping at Neiman Markets. If you walked in and felt Neiman Markets-ish, you knew you weren't going to get a deal that night. But you felt predisposed to spend money because it was an uplifting experience, it was quality, it felt quality, and you were willing to give up your money. If you walked in and everything was sort of thrown around and the you know it's a long line to get in and they handed you a bid card with a handwritten, you know, Sharpie bid number on the back and all that kind of stuff, well you sort of felt like, hey, this is great. I thought we were gonna get some good deals here tonight, you know, there's deals to be had here tonight. So it's all about that first impression. So if the more organized you are, the better your chance of, uh, of, of being successful. Don't forget you're in business. Anytime you make money, you have a business. It's up to you to decide how profitable you want that business to be. And think Disney. There's no disconnect between a profitable business and a fun business. Most people say, oh, you're going to try to get us all organized. You know, you're, you're trying to use all these you know, principles and recurring uh, themes and you know, and step by step, and you know, you're pulling all the fun out of our fundraiser that we have every year. Well, Disney has figured it out. Disney knows that you can be an incredibly well organized. They're probably one of the best organized businesses in the world. And they're also, what? The happiest place on earth, right? So if you think in terms of your event being Disney, rather than the dollar store, you're gonna probably find your results are gonna go up. Now. Okay? All right, so the step one, number one, is think about how much money you wanna make. No, as much as possible is not a goal. Okay, good. How much do you want to make? As much as possible. Great. We're going on vacation as far away as possible. You know? Well, the moon is pretty far away. Uh, so, you know, that doesn't work. You can't think in terms of a goal that has no substance. Because if it has no substance, you can't do anything deliberate to get there. You have to have a place to get to. So, you want to take your goal. People think of live and silent auction. They think this is part of the system. Well, that's great. But how much money is that? That's half of the money. Where's the other half? Well, the other half is things like underwriting. You get underwriting for all of your expenses. You get sponsorships, you sell tables. You put advertising into your booklet, hopefully. You can do an auction booklet. If you don't put an advertisement in there, it's wasted money. You're gonna to go to the printer anyway to print your auction items in a catalog, hopefully. Well, the back of every page is advertising space, okay? Um, ticket sales, you don't sell a ticket. If you sell a ticket, people think that they've already spent the money by buying the ticket. They have no obligation to attend. What you do instead is an RSVP system. They don't re respond, see, we play. So what that means is that we want a response. So what if the response is I can't make it? That's okay. We add a regret line on the invitation. If we're asking for a response, then we expect a response. Yes, I can make it. No, I can't make it. Well, if you can't make it, maybe you can make a donation anyway. We're glad they take your money even though you can't show up. You see, so you want the regrets line on there. Okay. Sustaining funds. My Rotary Club cut a deal with Banner Bank many years ago. We've had the relationship for over 10 years. We always have a three-year forward-looking sustaining fund from them. Every year they give us $15,000 to kickstart our event. And it's always committed three years in advance. So what do they get in exchange? Well, they get promoted in everything we send out. Every time we promote our event, Banner Bank is all over it, right? That's the price they pay for being a sustaining donor. It's great for us because we always start the year out with $15,000 as our seed money for our event every year. Raffles, of course, you'll do. Revenue enhancing elements, there's lots of those which we'll talk about in a little bit. Matching funds, 
taking advantage of matching funds. I'm going to give you a silver bullet right now. If you, if you do uh, a fundraiser and you're inviting people and you do the RSVP system, on your invitation, put a little line on there that says, my company, fill in the blank, has a employee matching gift program. Why? Because if you capture that information before they show up at your event, after the event, you send them the thank you letter and the statement that says, you know, thanks for coming to our event, you raised the paddle for $50, or you, you know, made your, your, your purchase an item that was $500 more than it was worth, those are all cash deductions for you. So we've included an extra copy of your receipt, receipt for you, so that you can give it to Microsoft or Costco or Boeing or whoever they might be working for. And now, what's happened? They know that you know who they work for. If you don't get that information beforehand, you'll never get it afterwards. Because if you send that receipt out a week or two after your event, you're old news now. They're off to two other fundraisers. But if you get that name of that company that they work for, it has a matching gift program, and you get that up front in the part of the RSVP process, when they get the statement from you two or three weeks later and the thank you, and you tell them that, remember you told us you worked for a company that has a matching gift program? The obligation to actually follow through for those matching goes up dramatically. And that can be worth another 10%. So if you make fifty thousand dollars, figure it's worth fifty-five thousand. If you make hundred thousand, it's worth another ten thousand. That one little tip will get you another ten percent. Okay, uh, and, that, and that's uh, matching funds. And then online auctions. Online auctions are, are sort of the new thing. I wish I had time all day to talk about that. Some of the other additional revenue enhancing elements: the balloon sale, run for the roses, candy hearts. How many of you have been involved in a charity auction before? Okay, great. Now you came to the right place. You're here to here to learn how to make it better. I appreciate that. How many of you, when you were not soliciting items, ended up with all kinds of things that you wouldn't even want to give away, much less buy yourself? And you know what I'm talking about, the Taekwondo lessons, right? The haircut and blow dry, you know, the teeth bleaching, the, uh, the teeth bleaching kit, right? The, the, uh, the will service, right? The, the, the chiropractic visit. You know where I'm going, right? So you put those on the silent auction tables and what does it do? It takes up prime real estate. Your silent auction table is like beachfront property, right? You want to put a condo on that, or you want to put a pup tent on it. Okay, so we don't want pup tents on our beachfront property. What we want are condos, okay? So how do you get rid of all these? Do you, do you turn them down? No, you take them, but how do you get rid of them? Well, what you do is you make a list of all the ones that are $25 to $50, and all the ones that are $50 to $100, and all the ones that are $100 and up. And you cut, you make a list, and you cut them into little strips, and you wrap them around a stem of a rose, or you put them uh, with double stick tape on the bottom of a little candy heart uh, sampler, or in the old days when Beanie Babies were popular, we tie them on a little, uh, you know, a little ribbon around a Beanie Baby neck or something like that. Uh, or you can stick them inside of a balloon and fill the balloons with helium. And now, what do you do? You have volunteers selling $25 balloons, $50 balloons, and $100 balloons. You pop the balloon inside, it says, congratulations, you won $75 chiropractic visit for your $50. So what you've done is you've cleaned up the silent auction tables of all the junkers and clunkers, and you've made more than you would have made if you put them out with a bid sheet. Because believe me, there's not going to be a bidding war over the chiropractic visit of the Taekwondo lessons. It just doesn't happen. If you get one magic bidder, you happen to be lucky. And at that one magic bidder, guess where that bid's going to start at 30%. You sold it for 30%, right? But if the Taekwondo lessons are worth 75 and you sold them in a $50 balloon, the person who bought it is happy as can be. Why? He got $75 worth of something and he only had to pay $50. Everybody loves to win, right? But you, you made $50 on a $75 item. You made a lot more than you would have made if it was a silent auction. See that? How to do that? Okay, so that's the book. And the Run for the Roses works great. You can, run, you can wrap around the stem of a rose and you can have red roses, yellow roses, pink roses, or other different color roses for different denominations. You have the volunteers go around. Sir, would you like to buy a rose for your lady? And guess what? She gets a rose and you get something worth at least $50. <laughs> so that's how that works, okay? All right.